Good morning and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Taylor Alanis. Well, Title 42 expired late last night and now the waiting begins to see how many migrants will attempt to cross the Rio Grande River and what the situation may look like today and into the weekend. Our Javier Guerra is live in Hildago. Good morning, Javier. You met with migrants. What have they been telling you? Hey Taylor, most of the migrants I talked with yesterday were from Venezuela, a country with a strong regime. Now I also visited the respite center in McAllen where many of the migrants are awaiting the next step in their journey. An unknown situation with the end of Title 42 for many along the U.S.-Mexico border. What's happening this weekend has never happened before. And so what, how many people are coming? We have no clue, but we expect it a lot. Sister Norma Pimentel with the Catholic Charities of the Rio Grande Valley says the respite center in downtown McAllen is already full of migrants. For help, they are in talks with other parishes across the Diocese of Brownsville. There's also a center in Anzalduas Park in Mission, Texas, assisting. For the most part, everybody in Texas uh, is, is trying to deal with the high numbers that they're getting. I also visited the McAllen bus stop and met with migrants trying to go up north. Many of them already have their hearings scheduled. It's a miracle that God gave me the opportunity to be here. Jose Alberto Leal Rojas says he is a Venezuelan escaping Nicolás Maduro's regime. As you can see, he is injured. Jose tells me he was one of the victims hurt in this past Sunday's incident in Brownsville where eight migrants died after a vehicle ran into many people waiting at a bus stop. I never thought this incident would happen. We never, never wish any harm against this man. Jose had to have surgery but is on the mend. He tells me that he wanted to start work right away to provide for his daughter, wife, and soon-to-be son. But he says this may be a setback. Jose also says if he didn't have to leave his country, he wouldn't. We don't want to leave our country. The only reason we left Venezuela is because we had to. Like I said, sometimes we didn't have any money to eat. Jose, like many other migrants, say they are relying on faith to get them through the rest of this journey, praying for a better life in the days that come. Now, Jose has a hearing scheduled with immigration in December in San Antonio, but Jose hopes to get to New York where he hopes to provide for his family.